the solution. YouTube, what's going on? Solution for the solution for kicks on Instagram as well. Make sure you put the exclamation mark, the number four, and the Z on there. And also comment, like, subscribe so you can check me out on other dope videos I'm releasing. And um, hit that notification bell. But before we get into that little admin note, yes, Pastor for Kicks is coming back. I have a video that I can for a little bit due to the uh, the nature of a very, very serious video I'm going to give you. And um, we're going to get into it, all right? If this video for some reason offends you or rubs you the wrong way, it exactly is what it's going to be. All right, but the intent is to not offend you. It's, it's to inform you and enlighten you. And the reason why I'm doing this video because I actually have pretty information to this because I've done some things and I'm able to speak on it in an experienced and educated manner. As we all know, on late Labor Day, Nike rolled out Colin Kaepernick as it's one of his spokespersons for his Just Do It campaign, the 30th anniversary of the Just Do It campaign. Their in insanely successful marketing campaign with that slogan, Just Do It. It is one of the things Nike is known for. It's worked. So in, in honor of that very successful ad campaign, they did something really provocative and they put Colin Kaepernick on it. Now, some of you saying, why did they add Colin Kaepernick to this campaign? First off, there was no adding. He has been an endorsee of Nike since 2006, his rookie year when he left University of Nevada. So basically his contract was nearing the end and he basically said, hey, we would like to add you to the campaign. What do you think? So some you're going, but wasn't he taking offers from Adidas and Puma? Yes, he was because he was in negotiation because the contract was coming to an end. Now, why didn't he take those offers from Adidas and Puma? We're not going to get into this football contract thing yet, all right? Because that's really not relevant right now. The contract portion of it is not relevant to what we're talking about today. Adidas and Pumas put stipulations on him being signed to them. They offered him a deal and said, if you are signed to an NFL team, we'll take you. So now Nike had a bargaining tool to come back at Colin Kaepernick and say, well, you didn't take the offer from Adidas and Puma to move on. Kyle Kaepernick had entered a collusion case against the NFL. Saying the owners basically ban, if you don't know the definition of collude, I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, but just in case you don't. Um, they basically band together and say, we're not going to sign him be because it's essentially a, a legal jargon term it's legal jargon for conspire okay with conspire is a very harsh term and it's basically implicating somebody a wrongdoing before they actually are judged to be have done wrong so they use colluding but in a sense in essence it is conspiring against so they basically band together to collude all right they band together and conspire and say, we're not going to sign him and we're going to use some very murky reasons to not sign him. Some of you saying, hey, he did have contract deals and he turned them down. All right. And he had his reasons for that. We're not going to get into why he turned them down. That, that's not really relevant to what we're doing. But he did turn them down. They said, hey, you have to sign. All right. Before we sign you. So Nike came back and said, oh, OK, you didn't take the deals. Here's what we have for you now. Why did Nike do this knowing that you see that swoosh on NFL uniforms? Why? That doesn't make sense to the average lay person. Here's why. Nike has a uniform contract to 2028. So you're saying Colin Kaepernick isn't being paid by the NFL. Well, in a circuitous route he is. So basically Nike has them by the scroll them right now, all right? And you can fill in the, another word for that, another colloquialism for that. So essentially they're still paying him. So those of you who are following the reason why Colin Kaepernick has kneeled, let me back up for a second to that as well. All right, here's where I come into play in this. When I was in the army, 
we had honors detail, all right? Honors detail. That means that you're going to either be presenting a flag or have it on display in a, a ceremonial sense. I was on honors. I was on color guard, meaning I watched out with either the U.S. flag, the Army flag, or my um, my unit's flag, okay? In this case, we had the state of Maryland flag, the U.S. flag, and the Army flag going out on the field, along with two soldiers carrying rifles. So let's get into it. You, you get picked. Each unit rotates around. You get picked as a team that's going to go out and render honors at either a Baltimore Orioles game, University of Maryland Terrapins game, um, a couple other cows around in the Baltimore Ravens, okay? So you bring it out, everybody stands, you know, you know, national anthem and all that good stuff. Okay, the solution, that happens all the time. Here's the part that I noticed way back then, something was different. What happened? So the, the average soldier is going to say, well, you know, we're at war now. It's a good thing. In essence, it is. But there's always something behind it. Follow the money. If you're ever wondering how something changed, follow the money. That's the saying we had when I was growing up in the hood and weird things would happen or something would stop that was going on that was bad. You started looking at where's this money coming from? And you got your answers. So the NFL and Department of Defense had engaged in a over $50 million dollar marketing campaign so with this 50 plus million dollar contract that the department of defense engaged in with the nfl now you have your flyovers at every game or a um not at every game or a helicopter some aircraft uh system of some sort or a parachute team will jump in with a game ball things of that nature and such depending on the importance of the game but there's always going to be a flag on the field there's going to be a color guard or you're going to be unfolding a massive flag a, a uh, there's going to be an active duty unit if they're close and they're available or it's going to be a reserve national guard unit from either of the branches doing and it just rotates around it rotates around and trust me everybody wanted to do this because you're on tv and it's a good thing for your evaluations you get awards from it and you get to watch the game for free all right, and a lot of times you got some free stuff. Everybody wanted to do it. But anyway, um, they have a thing called Salute to Service, okay? Where they honor all the military members, retired, your, your veterans, your active duty, your reserve, any any person that served honorably, or even if you didn't serve honorably, and you could prove that you still had an ID card of some sort, they gave you something. Either they put you on the big jumble charm screen, or there was some kind of trinket given. And I've had some of those things. I've been giving them away as of late because it just didn't sit right with me. But I do have one last thing left. And I was actually already retired when I got this. Um, I used to be able to go to Spurs games all the time. And the last game, somebody took me to a Spurs game about two years ago. It's been almost two years. So with the Salute to Service, they give you something. I had a Ravens hat, a couple of Ravens hats, a couple of t-shirts. And this is the last thing I got, this Spurs hat with the Army multi-cam. And the reason why I kept this particular hat for so long is because I was in the army, I actually retired before I had to officially be forced to wear this pattern. But anyway, moving right along. So now Colin Kaepernick, he's with the San Francisco 49ers. And as a man, as, as any person, you see things that don't sit well with you. And you start going, I need to do something. I've been there where I need to, to make a statement. I need to say something because this doesn't sit well with me. So Colin Kaepernick says, you know something, I need to do something to show my support of those who suffered social injustice being at the hands of the, the cops, okay? So, you know, he started sitting down then he started kneeling. But let's talk about the kneeling part where it's really, really important to a lot of you. Nick Boyer, a special forces soldier who had made an NFL team, I believe the Seahawks, he engaged Colin Kaepernick and said, hey, you know, how about you kneel? Because kneel is big. kneeling is actually an honorable thing. You 
you watch movies, when you go forth and see the king, what do they do? They kneel before the king to, to show respect for the king's position. So Colin Kaepernick began to kneel. All right. Now, for those of you out there who have a problem, I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to skip all the other crap that goes on in between him kneeling and what's going on. Let's think about him kneeling, that protest. Quick history lesson. This country was founded on protests. All right. For those who didn't pay attention in class, we're talking the Protestant. All right. We're talking about the pilgrims who fled England. OK, they fled England to to get away from the oppression and start a new life. They were protesting. All right. I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to do this because I'm not going to fall in line with the status quo of the policies. So they fled to what is now the United States and started a new life. Well, while they were there, they were still under the rule of the uh, the British Empire. OK, so they were being taxed heavily. So they started throwing the tea in the harbor as a form of what? Protest. You have a religion, uh, well, a, um, uh, uh, an element of Christianity, Protestant, protestant. So to protest, infidelity with that part of it, you know, in summation of this point I'm making is to protest is purely American. If the country was founded on protest. So how can you have a problem with an American citizen protesting an injustice? So, Hats, fact, wait. Take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, program. man. You ain't yeah. got the answers. Because you are a fake patriot. Relax. You ain't got the answers. Bro, I'm asking you you ain't question. been doing the education. This had nothing to do with the flag. All right. The flag was never on the field with the players until the Department of Defense paid the NFL 50 plus million dollars to have it out there. Salute the service. It was a marketing campaign. All right. So now you have people burning jerseys. And if they sign this guy and making death threats against Colin Kaepernick because he's simply being American. All right. Let me explain something to you about oppression. Oppressors understand three things. Three, severe suffering, severe loss of life, and loss of revenue. That's it. They do not respond to anything else until those three things happen. All right? Those three things must happen before the oppressors will come to the table. And to give you an example of that, a one prime example of the one of the three elements I gave you, the Montgomery bus boycott. They weren't talking about anything until the black people in that part of the country said, we're not going to ride your buses. And they crippled the bus system. They lost millions of dollars. So they said, you know something? We got to talk or we're going to go bankrupt. We're out of business. The city is screaming to a halt. That's protesting people. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was harmed. But you got your point across and you changed things because you had you saw, you know, something this was wrong and we were getting over. And yeah. All right. That's how it works. Colin Kaepernick had no desire to harm anyone. But always say this. Racist people are some of the dumbest people walking because they, their ideologies doesn't align with common sense. And you, you got sneaker YouTubers posting videos. And trust me, they aren't talking about the stuff I'm talking about. They're talking about people burning merchandise. All right, and here's the part I'm getting to. You wanna know how dumb racist people are? You are burning something you already paid for. The company already got their money. All right, so you're saying, well, Nike lost billions of dollars in a matter of hours. They wanna make it back. The stock is already going back up. Sneaker YouTube is pretty much 18 and under. Nike. Their biggest consumer base is 14 to 22 males. And you see it on YouTube. Look at all these kids talking about my collection, my collection. And they're still growing. They aren't worried about some baby boomer that's my parents age burning some air monarchs. OK, which is, by the way, the most, you know, soul sneaker of Nike. But that's a small piece. These guys aren't buying sneakers back to back to back. You know, some of you guys' dads wear the Air Monarchs. 
they're going to be grilling in those sneakers for the next three, four years, and they don't care. Now, let, let's let's back up for a second, because you got some devil's advocates out there, too. And they're saying, well, it's kind of like Colin Kaepernick capitulated by engaging in his ad campaign. He's, he's went commercial now with this. It's not real anymore. You know, he, he, he's, he's making money off this. You know, Nike has always been a risk taker. You, you think about first it started with Michael Jordan in the band sneakers. Y'all know that. Okay, I'm not going to beat you over here. Then you had Charles Barkley saying, I'm not a role model, which pissed people off. I was a teenager during that time. Some of you aren't aware of that. Charles Barkley said, I am not a role model and pissed the media off. Guess what Nike said? Hey, Charles, let's talk. But you wear his Barkley's though, right? You did not know that. That sneaker is successful because of Charles Barkley's controversy. Nike loves that. It's very cutting edge, it's very contemporary, and it appeals to the young demographic. We ate that up. We did. Because my generation knew, Charles isn't my dad. I'm not related to him. He's a sports figure. You know, I like the way he played, but this guy, I don't expect him to teach me right from wrong. All right? That's entertainment. That was my generation. But back to it. So now you have Colin Kaepernick, the face of the Just Do It campaign, and everybody's up in arms. So I ask you, racist, why are you mad? Tell me why you're mad. I said, let's tell me why you're mad. Really? What are you mad about? Say it. Say it. Remember I told you about oppression? That's why. Then the NFL releases a statement and says, you know, basically they value the, the the liberties of all people and social injustice is wrong. I'm not I'm not quoting them on that, but that was the gist of what they were saying. Because they realized they about to get their butts handed to them. The collusion case moved forward. Now they have to go to court and they're reeling. The NFL's backpedaling because now they have to deal with the guy that they wanted to keep out of the league in their face all the time with their number one sponsor. Okay. And it, until these things stop happening to people of color, we have a problem. And I thank you, Colin Kaepernick, for being in people's face so they can deal with it, so they'll be forced to come to the table. Marketing plan or not, I like it. I like it. And remember, it's not about how much you pay for sneakers, it's why you pay that much. No matter. Boom. The solution.